So how long does this process take? Is it kind of standard or is it all over the board? What? So the entire process on some, depending on wh where you're moving from, could be for Nicaragua, it's horrible. Could be five months, six months. So today we are talking to Pablo Arias. He is a international relocation specialist. So Pablo, I know there's a lot of issues that can come up with customs, but first give me a reason why I might want to move my things to another country versus just buying everything new when I get there. That seems a lot easier. Let me give you one example. If you love golf, mm -hmm. a country like Panama and Costa Rica, even Nicaragua, we will have golf course. You know, it's not many like in the U.S., but oh, really? in Costa Rica, for being a small country, I can think about six to seven places where people could play golf. Okay. Uh, in a very tiny country. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to buy your clubs and, and play golf, if you find a store that sells this, they will probably carry one or two brands, maybe three brands at the uh, most. You're going to yeah. pay a premium because this is something that – is not being imported imported as a volume item. It's just a mm -hmm. luxurious item, so you're gonna pay. You're really gonna pay a premium, and maybe you like another brand. Maybe you really enjoy having your clubs. Maybe you you already have your clubs in your house, so you're thinking, oh, I'm my clubs, adding my sofa, in my recliner, it's leather. You have all these things, right. and so it may end up. I won't say I won't say you're gonna save money, but you're gonna. It makes sense in some of these cases. So Pablo, tell me how this works. Do I just put everything into a container myself? Do I do I need to write everything down, like every single detail? Uh, is somebody gonna look at that later? I don't know. Tell me what's the, uh, the what the process is. Depending okay. on what you need. Sometimes we coordinate for the local crew to go a day before or two days before to start packing, bring boxes, packing material, have everything ready, set up. And then when the, when the container arrives, the crew loads everything inside of the container, and then it gets sealed. This crew, the local, the local, the local uh, moving crew, will do a packing list, and we ask them, "This is what we need for the list," because the list is very important when you're dealing with customs. So we ask them, "We need this list this way. We need to know electronics, depending on the country. A country like Mexico or Panama or Costa Rica will have to write down brand, model, and serial number of electronics." So people don't know these things, you know, but we need the crew who is packing to do to do it that way. Or if you're doing the packing by yourself and you're shipping to a country that allows you to you do the packing by yourself, this is what you talked to us before so we can walk you through these requirements so you don't make the mistake of just putting things in a box, get them shipped, and then when it lands a destination, you end up, we need this information. Okay, it means if we don't have the information, it means that we will have to go to the customs terminal at destination, open the box, take a look at the ID, write down everything, and then with that information, make the customs declaration. So doing yeah. it right from the beginning, yeah, it really makes a lot of sense. So doing the research properly for what uh, the destination country requires Mm -hmm. will save you a lot of time and money. And this is why I do believe we have a really uh, valuable proposition. Hey, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the like button. That lets me know that this is the kind of content you want to see, and I'll make sure I make more videos like this. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified every time we drop a new video. Okay, so you specialize mostly in Latin America, is that right? But we specialize on expat destination countries. So we specialize mm -hmm. in Costa Rica, Panama. We also do, believe it or not, people is moving to Nicaragua to a small little town. It's called San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. uh, people are moving to places that people wouldn't even believe, but it's happening. And we have customers. Uh, but each and every country have their own little policy, their own little complication that we help the customer understand this is the way you need to prepare for this particular destination. Okay, and you also work a lot in Mexico, right? Mexico as well. Uh, we have employees uh, in Mexico. Abelardo uh, help us with everything that's, ha that's happening in Mexico. And Mexico is also very particular. There are things that you have to have ready. Uh, in particular, I do, believe, uh, I, I do believe that many of the countries that we service, immigration is linked to customs. Mm -hmm. So as a tourist... As a tourist, you might want to think, okay, I'm going to Mexico, and you know, uh, Mexico, you, you have this uh, 100 and, uh, 180 days, right, to be in Mexico. You have, as a tourist, 180 days, and people might want to say, okay, I'm just going to ship everything, and then 
be in and out of Mexico, in and out of Mexico and have my things. But that's not going to cut it because customs in Mexico is going to link you to your immigration process. And you're going to say, well, here's my passport. I'm just a tourist. As a tourist, you're not allowed to import legally you know, your house goods. You have to have something that is at least your temporal immigration card. The temporal immigration mm -hmm. card allow us to start the, the customs process. And without that, it's going to be a, it's going to be just it's just. Don't don't go to that. Mexico 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 makes it simple. Uh, if you have the the immigration process, uh, this the temporal the temporal residency, it, it makes it super super easier. That right. if you're a tourist, then you have to declare everything and pay for taxes on everything separately. It just becomes a nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, if when you when you import this as a your move. Because you are immigrating into Mexico, uh, they only give us one line to declare, so everything gets declared for customs in one single line. So it makes it easier if you do it right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you get your temporary visa, say in Mexico specifically, you have a very limited time to bring all your things over. Once you exceed that time, they're going to charge you basically additional fees, like import fees. So it can get very expensive, right? Many countries, many countries have this this the same policy. It's not okay. it's not just Mexico, uh, and every country has a, a little something a little bit different. Some is when you fly into a country, the shipment should land within three months, no more oh. than that. Some other countries allow you up to one year, like Ar Argentina, twelve uh -huh. months. Okay. Uh, I was I was doing a little you know refresh research on Colombia yesterday, and they have the six months. So okay. all of these things could change depending on the country you're shipping into. And some countries don't even try shipping. You know, they, they are just the design of the customs process is not really designed for somebody to, to move. So can I bring like anything? I mean, obviously not weapons or anything illegal, but can I just bring anything that's here in my house? For right. Colombia, can't bring anything other than your house good and only one electronic per, per of one kind. So uh, let's say you have... Uh, you want to bring three coffee makers. They're going to say, uh-uh, uh -uh. one coffee maker because you are moving. It's one family, one coffee maker. Hey, question of the day. If you're thinking about moving out of the country, what's your timeline? Are you thinking maybe the next 12 months, the next few years, or are you waiting for a big event like retirement or when the kids leave home? I'd really like to know. Let me know in the comments below. So how long does this process take? Is it kind of standard or is it all over the board? What? Some of the countries like Costa Rica, the customs process could be a month. Nicaragua, the customs process could be three months. Believe it or not, it's crazy. Now, is that like three months from the minute it hits customs to me being able to come pick it up? From the moment it lands, it lands into Port Corinto, Nicaragua. Then we move it into Managua, which is the capital, Managua. And then we unload it at the customs terminal. And then three months. So the entire process on some, depending on wh where you're moving from, could be for Nicaragua, it's horrible, could be five months, six months. Wow. So I'm sure that's worst case scenario. Are there better countries or is it all kind of like that? Panama, it's a week. It's five days oh, average. Easy. It lands into Balboa port. We have everything, everything ready. We file. It's in and out. It's fairly easy. We've seen it as uh, fast as we've seen it is three days on the port and through, yeah. through the border. Uh, when, when we have an inland freight from Costa Rica to Panama, we've uh -huh. seen it in 24 hours. In, customs, out. So it's super quick. Yeah. Uh, so every country is different. The point here is you are moving internationally. You need yeah. to understand what are the situations that you are going to face on that particular destination. Nicaragua is complex. Costa Rica is complex. Panama is maybe easier. Uh, <laughs> Mexico has his special requirements and some limitations. It's, it doesn't mean that you can bring everything you can because... They're gonna, right. you know, they're gonna give you maybe only one item per thing, yeah. one item, uh, maybe three beds. Yes, three bedrooms, three beds, three families. So they they, gonna, they allow these things. But understanding what is your destination country. Wow, Pablo, you've given us so much good information. I certainly learned a lot. I know you have a website. So if people want to reach out to you for a free consultation, what's the name of your website, and how do you prefer that they contact you? Very simple is the name of our company, which is International Relocation Partner.com. Okay. International Relocation Partner.com. It's got a little section that says book a consultation call, and that goes directly into myself and the rest of our team, which is taking calls. So when you go and click on that, 
you here you go is on, on the screen uh you are gonna get connected to the person that manages that route uh so Perfect. i know a lot of central america i know a bit about mexico but some some destinations Avelar will manage well, and some destinations we will manage better. So we connect you with an special agent for your destination. That was really powerful information from Pablo. It just goes to show that if you're trying to make a really big decision in life, it's good to have an expert in your corner, someone that knows the ins and outs and can help you avoid any of the pitfalls. If you'd like to learn more about different countries that you might want to live in, why not check out our destination playlist right there. If you'd like to learn about some of the cost of living in these countries, check out this video right here. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. In the meantime, until we talk again, keep on trekking.